Hello, welcome back. I am so excited for today's video because you know how much I love Played Up a lot. Uh, but before we start, I'm Savalian. I make videos about games, development, and creativity. And today I'm going to walk through my beautiful donut automation setup in Played Up's new bakery update that they released late last week in honor of Played Up's one year anniversary. I want this to be a quick, focused video about the donut automation specifically, so I'll just touch on a couple of tips for getting to this point, uh, getting enough resources to automate all of this in the game, and then I'll dive into how this automation works, and if you want to see how I prioritize upgrades in a full run, I also have a much longer played up bakery video where I do an entire run, it's lightly edited, but all the important pieces are there. And in that run, I do primarily serve cupcakes, so it's similar, but a little bit different. Now this automation is not 100% hands-off, but it is very close and requires just a couple of things to be picked up and put down as it's running. And then after that, it, it, does, it does do most of the stuff completely automatically. So I'm very proud, it's very cool. This restaurant I'm using as an example is actually a tier one franchise where I've selected coffee as a second main with my franchise card. I don't have this save anymore to double check all the cards that were active, but from memory I am serving donuts in all three flavors, chocolate, coffee, and lemon, and I'm also serving black coffee and lattes with optional sugar. I've also got individual dining, which I think is one of the best cards for the bakery foods because you can very easily set up a bar get a lot of customers in at one time so they're not waiting outside, sling those baked goods as fast as you can without having to worry about getting a whole table's order together, and the bar tables make them order quickly, which is especially helpful for things like black coffee that they take a long time to eat. So let's get into it from the top. First, how do you even get all the stuff that I have here? You need a lot of pieces to get an automation going for most things, uh, but donuts are especially bad. I have a few strategies I use to support heavy automation builds like this. First, I recommend using the booking desk early in the run to call as many people as you can possibly manage, and then scale down how many people you're calling as it gets more difficult so that you don't die. But you really, really need that booking desk money, especially since the baked goods often do not sell for very much. I also recommend saving your first research desk in the blueprint cabinet until a second one shows up. This is because research desks are con considered staples and they are more likely to spawn if you don't have one. I always upgrade this first extra desk to a copying desk. I think this is critical for automation as well as buying all the blueprint cabinets that show up so that you always have space to store additional blueprints that you want to copy. If you get a third research desk, you can go for a discount desk if you really want to. I don't usually bother because it is so expensive, and while I'm getting that upgrade, I'm taking up a blueprint cabinet slot that I could be using for other things. I also learned recently that staples are less likely to show up on a reroll, so one thing you can do is reroll early if you're looking for things to copy like combiners, portioners, and conveyor belts because they're more likely to show up on a reroll, uh, especially at the beginning when you don't have uh, some of these staples that are gonna be filling up the initial roll. And once I have the copying desk, I start with upgrades that are gonna make filling orders easier immediately and not worrying as much about the end game. This might be getting all the tables set up first so I can hold as many people as possible, getting some coffee tables copied, for donuts specifically, getting a safety hob early is very important because if you don't have a safety hob, every time you cook a donut, you have to take the pot off of the burner, and it's it's just super annoying. <laughs> it's super annoying and it wastes time, which can kill you. An early portioner is very good for all the baked goods as well because every baked good needs to be portioned at some point. Now the final build. For the donut batter, you make a cake batter and then add milk. So I'm doing this at the top left. I'm using this small room. A three by three space is enough to make a batter. 
And then if you want to add the milk, I've got another little space above that. So flour and eggs and sugar are conveyed up. The egg is conveyed onto a mixer so it can be cracked. The flour and sugar are combined in from the side into the mixer space. If you have more space, you could also automate adding the mixing bowl. For that, you'll want to send the mixing bowl to be combined with flour and sugar first and then over to the egg mixer or even potentially with a second mixer to make sure that that egg gets cracked. And then you'd be able to smart grabber the mixing bowl back to its initial position and automate that. That sounds really nice. I wonder if I'll be able to do that in the future. But in my setup, I do have to drop the mixing bowl in diagonally to the mixer space. I'm careful not to reset the smart grabber, but it's not the end of the world if I do because it shouldn't match the mixing bowl because it will have stuff in it so I'll just be able to wait until it's done mixing and then reset the grabber. Always pay attention. If you have a smart grabber that you are able to accidentally put something else onto, that can ruin your run. It can. It really can. So be careful. Once everything's mixed, the smart grabber pulls the mixing bowl out, combines in the milk, I bought a second milk, uh, so I would have one for my latte machine as well. And that's my donut batter complete. Now, I also have the manual step that I need to grab the finished batter and drop it onto the donut tray. Uh, this, I believe, can be automated with a combiner, uh, but I do not have enough space and I, I didn't have the capabilities to do that. So I just grab it and drop it in. And then when I'm done, I put the mixing bowl right back into its spot on the mixer and it makes another batch of batter so that it's ready to go when I notice that the donut tray is empty. The frying is fully automated once the batter is loaded in and that is what I'm most proud of with this setup. It's And it's surprisingly easy. You just need two portioners and a combiner. So once the donut batter is done rising, it will get portioned out at the top, sent into the combiner, which puts it into the pot of oil. It will fry, and then when it's done frying, it will get portioned out and sent to the frozen prep. I do have to set up the oil pot at the start of the round, but it doesn't get used up like soups do, so I can just leave it there and it's good to go. Just make sure that when you're building your automation that you are either putting the, the oil pot into place with conveyors or that you're able to reach it. Uh, I had a couple... I had one run where I noticed immediately that I couldn't reach it, so I restarted. And then another tip for if you're really getting into automation and you don't want to have to restart an entire run because you've made a little mistake, uh, first there's always practice mode. You could practice all the steps, make sure everything goes through correctly. But also, if you get into a day and you notice that something is not right, if you forgot to rotate a grabber or something like that. If you save an exit, uh, you'll be able to restart from the planning period of that day. So, you know, some people might consider that like save scumming, cheating. I just think it's, an, it's a nice thing when you notice that you've made a mistake not to have to restart your entire run uh, for, a, for a little oversight. So I will do that unashamedly if I, if I notice that something is wrong. So with those two pieces of automation, very little hands-on effort. I have to put the oil pot in at the beginning, and then I have to add the mixing bowl and move the batter, and that is all the manual work I have to do before I have fresh, plain donuts coming out into this frozen prep. And then on the right side of the kitchen, I have automated, well, lattes, not really part of this, but I needed it for my run. And then I have all three of the flavorings automated. The chocolate is easy, just send it to a safety hob and it will melt and not burn. For coffee, you grab from one coffee machine to get the cups into another coffee machine to fill it with coffee. And then in order to only grab the finished coffees, instead of just grabbing a bunch of cups, you will need a smart grabber set to full coffee. And these are very difficult to fix if you reset them accidentally because it will just keep grabbing cups <laughs> um, and, and you won't be able to reset it with a fresh cup of coffee. So I would highly recommend hiding the smart grabber from coffee out of reach. That can really, really mess up your run if you accidentally reset the coffee to cups or to something else. 
And then finally, the lemons just need to go to a mixer to be chopped and they are good to go. Now I've done something else with my setup that I think is really important when you get into late game when there's just tons and tons of customers and you have to move very quickly. And that is routing the flavorings through a combiner. This is important for one reason, trays. Trays are a lot smarter than they used to be, but they seem to get confused with donut flavorings or baked good flavorings. For example, if I have two plain donuts on a tray, I can't seem to interact with a frozen prep full of flavorings, and when I try to interact even on a counter with the flavorings, it, it doesn't seem to work. It tries to pick them up first instead of adding the donut to the flavoring, but if you drop the donut on an empty counter and use a combiner to combine in the flavorings, this works really consistently to let me grab two plain donuts, flavor them both, and deliver them to the customer. Depending on what you have available, um, this last step might not be feasible, but it gets real busy in here <laughs> depending on what you've picked up, especially if you've had to pick up other kinds of baked goods during your run. Uh, in order to manage your cards, you may have a lot of customers and not be able to serve them fast enough without the tray. And I was very nearly at the point where I had everything completely streamlined, but I ended up getting the card that makes mess apply in a wider range, and it, it absolutely destroyed my run. I couldn't even move next to the bar because the entire walkway was full of top tier sludge puddles the entire game. It was, it was unbearable. And I was one turn away from affording a robot mob, which made me incredibly sad, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. But there it is, my beautiful donut automation and plate up. I got to overtime 14 on this run, I believe, which is very good for me. I usually get overwhelmed around overtime six. So this was a nice treat. I got to play with a lot of stuff that I just don't have time to set up in a normal run. So I had a lot of fun and I'm very proud. If you love Played Up like I do, I have several other Played Up videos, many of them featuring new updates or holiday maps or special modes. I would appreciate if you would subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video and I hope to see you there. Bye bye!